Good morning everyone. Today I will show you guys how I made this. Join my Patreon to get all of the assets I created for this scene. So I started by modeling a robot, which may seem like an obvious first step to many people, my past self included, but I failed horribly. My robot looked like a PS5 with legs. So I started all over again. This time I looked at reference material and made some concept art using the Midjourney AI image generator. The whole thing runs via Discord and is really easy to use. You just type imagine and then whatever you want. From that text, the artificial intelligence will now create an original image that didn't exist before. The AI always puts out four results. If there is one you like, you can upscale it. And that's how I ended up with these two images. I like using AI generated reference because you don't accidentally rip off someone else's art while looking for inspiration. Next, I launched Blender. In Blender, I began boxing out the shape of the robot. Subdividing, insetting and then extruding faces is an easy way to add detail to flat surfaces. I used this cylinder as a joint and extruded a few faces. Then I did the same thing to the body of the robot. After I was done modeling the basic shape of the robot, I applied materials to the different parts of the model. And I used Smart UV Project to unwrap the robot. I duplicated the legs after UV unwrapping to get a higher texture resolution and no one will notice that they share the same UV map anyway. Next I exported the scene to Substance Painter. In Substance Painter I started baking the mesh maps. An ambient occlusion mesh map for example makes it possible to quickly add dirt and rust to the crevices of your model. I applied this steel painted worn smart material and changed the paint color to make it more closely resemble the robot from the reference images. Then I assigned a similar material to the rest of the robot. Back in Blender I used the Node Wrangler add-on to connect all of the textures in like two clicks. Next I used textures from textures.com and Ian Hubert's Patreon to model some mechanical elements to put on the robot. I'm using project from view and loop cuts to cut out the different pieces I need. And then I make them into a 3D model. If there are stretched faces, I just reproject them and move the UVs to a better fitting place in the UV editor. The knife tool lets you cut out more complex shapes. Right now the material doesn't look photoreal, it still needs roughness and bump. So I run the image through a color ramp into the bump input of the principal BSD app. Raising the blacks is almost always a good idea unless your model is wet or really shiny. But it's still not photoreal. Plug the image into the height input of a bump node and plug the normal of the bump node into the normal input of the principal BSDF shader. Now turn down the distance. A hue saturation value node is great to adjust the color of the object. Now I just repeat the process a few times until I've got all of these models. I could have modeled even more assets to make the robot look more realistic, or if you could call something like this realistic at all, but generally the more detail you add, the better it looks. Next I just place the assets all over the robot to add detail wherever needed. Mind that I only add detail to the front side of the robot because no one will see the back anyway. Next I created cables and hoses to add further details. I used a bezier curve to guide the cables. Next I made one segment of the cable and applied an array modifier as well as a weld and curve modifier. Then I just selected one of the curves with the eyedropper tool of the curve modifier. Well and that's how you make cool looking cables. Just make sure that the location is applied on both the curve and the cable segment. I repeated this with a few different cable variations. You can use a simple deform modifier to twist the cable. The robot still needed feet, so I quickly modeled them. Now that I had a finished robot model, I was ready to move on to the environment. I got all of the rocks from Quixel Megascans. I made a super detailed ground using the technique I showed in my last Blender Tips video. It doesn't even create lag. I made a quick camera animation and added a noise modifier in the graph editor to add some camera shake. Then I added some rocky hills, they are also from Quixel Megascans. I used an HDRI from HDRI Haven to create realistic lighting. I added fog with the mist pass. It's way faster than rendering actual volumetrics and it's also adjustable after the render with a color ramp node. Next, I animated the light on top of the robot. I applied a noise modifier to the keyframe of a value node that drives the emission strength of the light. I applied a limits modifier as well to make the brightness change less smooth. 
In Cycles Renders, you have to use a glare node set to fog glow to add a nice looking bloom around your lights. Next, I placed a tiny cliff beneath the character because, well, it looks good, I think. I matched the color using a hue saturation value node. I added higher mountains in the background and some light vegetation. Every decent render needs birds, so I added birds next. I found this free model on Sketchfab and animated the wings using shape keys. Then I duplicated the bird and offset the keyframes so their wings don't move in sync. And then I made them fly through the scene. I placed this cube with a volumetric material in the middle of the scene and plugged a noise texture into the density and then I animated the noise to make it look as if there was a strong wind. Next I planted these rotten trees and duplicated the robot into the background. I still needed a character model so I dressed like a Star Wars character and made my mother, I mean my assistant, take a quick photo scan of me. I explained the whole process of 3D scanning in my last video so check that out if you want to learn more about the subject. I placed myself on the scene, matched the color and gave my backpack the same antenna light thing I put on the robot. Next I used shape keys to animate some small movement. Well and that's basically it, I rendered everything and showed it to my friend. Okay, so I jumped into Blender and destroyed one of the robots. I even added smoke. Well, and that's basically it. If you guys enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you really enjoyed this video, you can join my Patreon and get all of the assets I created today.